welcome to NAPOD, where we provide NA speaker meetings and workshops in a podcast. We are an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us to be self-supporting by visiting NAPOD.xyz. Look for the donate link and drop a dollar or two in the virtual basket. If you're also an AA or have friends that are, please tell them about our other podcast, Sobercast. Sobercast features AA speakers and workshops in the same format as NAPOD. We upload a new speaker every day, and it's easy to subscribe by searching for Sobercast, that's two words, on any podcast player app or go to Sobercast.com. Enjoy the podcast, and thanks for listening. Speaker for tonight from Nightdale, North Carolina, Cynthia W. Hey, family, my name is Cynthia, and I'm an addict. Grateful. Grateful. I just want to ask one question. Is anybody in Florida grateful to be clean? Man, I'm telling you, we got something to be grateful for. I've heard them say a lot of times I've earned my seat. But I'm telling tell you, out the gate, I didn't earn mine. Mine has been a gift from the beginning. See, I'm talking about being grateful. You got to know what you're grateful for. See, ain't no need to play around with this thing. Because, see, for some people, this is a speaker meeting. To others, this is an emergency. See, so I'm talking about trying to carry the message to the best of my ability. To give back what was so freely given to me. I'm talking about going down in my spirit and searching and knowing exactly why I'm here. See, I'm talking about knowing what you're grateful for because some of us can go over that with a minimum of concern. See, I'm talking about being in the middle of the street with nowhere to go. Being in a nine block radius and here I am in Florida carrying a message. I'm talking about being hungry, lonely, angry, and tired. Not even able to know that I'm caught up in the disease of addiction. So how grateful I was to find out that I had a disease and not a moral deficiency. Because see, I always thought something was just wrong with me. Why can't I stop? See, I'm grateful today that I can open up the refrigerator and there's more than bacon, soda, and water in there. And you got to come back. It was like, okay, God, all we're going to do is go to meetings and hang out. 
and let them know what it's like up in here. You know, so when you die clean, you got a safe place to go, right? So all they're going to do is just carry the message. They go down there, oh boy, they go back to them old people, places, and things. So one of the guys say, look, I tell you what, we're going to meet right here at this spot on the third day, and we're going to go ahead on and do what we got to do. Well, one of the guys went on and did what he was supposed to do. He went to meetings. He got with people. He told them what was going on. Well, the other guy made a decision. He still want to go back to them people, places, and things. So the third day come up, and he go to the spot. Here's his buddy sitting there on the park bench with a cigarette in his mouth where ashes bent all the way down, <laughs> about to fall, and he says to the guy, come on, man, let's go, let's go. He say, man, I done sold my passport for a fee. Newcomer, you got your passport. You ain't never got to use no more. Don't sell your ticket. Don't sell your ticket. I just want to take a moment and just think this convention. I want to so much thank David for calling me. See, because see, y'all, what y'all need to know, there's a whole bunch of people behind the scenes that need to be, had some attention. Not being single out or think that they better than, but how about if nobody was here to carry the metrics, where would we be? So you got to give some kind of props to the people behind the scene, and I want to thank David. I want to thank Bonnie. I want to thank anybody and everybody on the service level to help bring this on for us to know that there's a better way to live. Because an addict, sometimes they tell me I got control issues, right? So I want y'all to do something for me, right? I want y'all to say this with me. Because an addict, any addict, can stop using drugs, find the desire to live, and find a new way to live. All right, y'all. Like, like, I need to tell y'all this, there's no mistake that I am here. There's no mistake that I'm here. I'm here for a reason and a purpose. I'm here because the God of my understanding found it necessary to stretch me up out of my insanity because I had something to do. And I'm not going to say it was so much for Carcotics Anonymous. What I do, it was for to help somebody here on earth to let them know that you don't have to die to this disease of addiction. We got a passport, y'all, and it's called Narcotics Anonymous. And if you don't believe it, stop coming. We can refund your misery. It's real easy to be as refundable. Because what happened is when we was out there using, we didn't have a choice. Now we got a choice. My clean date is July 15, 1998, and I am grateful. Grateful to be clean. And what I realized is that I'm, if I'm not grateful for my clean time, I can't be grateful for nobody else. Because, see, once you know, you can't go back to not knowing. You can't have this program up in here and act like you don't know based on a feeling. Because, see, this is a feeling disease. I used because I was happy, sad, lonely, tired, envious, jealous. But, see, now I've learned some words up in this piece. I got a sponsor, I got some steps, I got some things that I can do to find out exactly what I'm feeling. So I don't give the disease of addiction no power. That word powerless is unnecessary on some given day. We can use it so we can stay in denial. Or we can do the best that we can and try to get in touch with what exactly, I'm talking about getting to the exact nature of my nature. And what's going on with me? Because see, when I got here, I was a hot mess. I'm talking about hadn't taken a bath. Well, let me clarify that. Yes, I had, because the prison says it's time to take a bath. <laughs> you see, I'm talking about my disease took me to prison. 
And I got there by hanging out with the Me Too fools. Y'all know who they are, right? Where you been to jail? Me Too. I'm talking about and thinking that it's all right. Not even realizing that something's missing. Being okay. I'm talking about stepping over people when it's all right and they dead because I got to go get one. I'm talking about leaving my kids alone because it's not necessary to take care of them. It's more important to go get one. I'm talking about not worrying about a job, paying the bill, how the money going to come from because it didn't matter. So if you got your passport and your disease took you there and you got all these things on the inside going on that's good, you need to take a look at what you've been blessed with. See, I'm talking about this disease wants us dead at any given point, and it will get us while we clean if we don't do the necessary work to get here. And so I'm so grateful, but when I got here, right, it was like um, I had to do something different. You know, I prayed in my bed that night in prison. And I told God, I can't do this no more. Anybody ever had that prayer that you was just tired? And you really meant it this time. See, what I need to let y'all know is that when you really tired, and you mean, you know that sincerity. You know this is going to be the last time. Because how many times have we told ourselves it was going to be the last time? But in the back of our mind, we really knew the truth. I went to the treatment centers to rest. <laughs> All four of them. <laughs> I gained a few pounds, and the disease said, let's go over here and show them, newcomer, how much I weigh now. <laughs> I'm no longer putting on two pair of pants so I can look like I wear five. <laughs> See, I'm talking about being caught up and not even knowing. Setting myself up and not even being aware. This is how powerful this is, this, this disease is, y'all. You got to know. You got to know when you stop using it, you got that passport, what you been coming from. Because we can say we grateful. You might hear me say this a lot of times, but what are you really grateful for? Don't come calling me telling me you done used after you done used. Some of those things. 
So to get that sponsor they was talking about was awesome because I was sick in my spirit. See, you got to know that this is a spiritual fixing you got to fix. Money, property, and prestige does not equal recovery. I don't care how many cars, how many houses, how many PHs and CHs and DHs. But if your spirit is messed up and you still find it necessary to gossip, and let me tell you what gossip is, gossip is sucking the life out of somebody just so I can have a life. See, I'm talking about going in my spirit and being able to look at what's going on, the things I don't want to go back to. I hear people say, I don't have another run. Well, hell, I do. I can always go back to using, but do I have another recovery? Do I have another recovery? Because this might be the one that busts my heart. So if you up in here and think about using, because see what y'all need to know is somebody going to use up in this piece tonight. But I'm trying to mess it up. you to know, when you're getting ready to do what you do, you're going to hear Cynthia say, don't do that. Don't do that. I've heard people have people come back and tell me that too, y'all. <laughs> I'm talking about being able to get in your spirit, y'all. See, because what I know is that I might not use some of the terminology and I'm not trying to offend anyone. If I do, please forgive me. Somebody said call your sponsor, but I'm not going to say that. <laughs> I'm talking about being blessed. I'm talking about, see, you, you, brothers, I can go buy, you can go buy your pair of sneakers today. By choice. No longer am I trying to take care of the dope man. I can look good, too. And my spirit is feeling all right because I went to the store and bought what I said I was going to do. Huh? Y'all remember that? You get paid for the ones of us that was employable. You know you get a job and you're going to say, look, it's Friday, let's pay the bills. Let's pay the light bill. Let's pay the rent. Let's do this for the kids. And I got $25 over here. I got some change. We going on where we got to go. And next thing your body finds this, mm, how I got here, Shaggy. talking about doing it and not even realizing. So when they talk about changing your attitude, thinking and behavior, they not just saying it just because we need a whole change. I'm talking about when I first got clean, I used, I, I used for 25 years something. Something. People, places, and things. I manipulated everything and everybody. Everybody I came in contact with was a victim. Everybody. We talking about the self-centeredness of the disease. Me, me, I, I. And not even realizing that that's where I'm at. I'm talking about when I first got clean, I would automatically walk in the supermarket and my body would go all the way first day to the beer aisle. Not even realizing doing the shaggy thing, how I get here. So when I began to do some work and get in touch that it was my mind that needed to be changed, I had to get in touch with some work, y'all. I'm talking about being powerless, unmanageable, caught up in insanity. Y'all know what insanity is, right? Well, let me give you a prime example. You ever been vacuuming the floor? And there's a piece of paper on the floor. Can't get it up, right? Pick it up. You look at it. And you throw it back on the floor. <laughs> huh? Expecting something different. It ain't pick up the first time. I'm talking about being crazy. Same way with the disease of addiction. We go back and forth, back and forth to the man 
man where he done gave you 900 dummies and you go right back. I'm talking about being able to change my thinking. Going up here, y'all, is dangerous sometimes. I'm talking about even with time. Because I can get caught up real easy if it look good, if it smell good, if it might do me good. Huh? We talking about obsession and compulsion, y'all. One is too many and a thousand is never enough. I don't get enough for nothing on some days. I tell my husband that too. I'm talking about just y'all really getting in touch with what's going on here. You know, we was talking about with the third step, being able to turn stuff over. You know, the literature says, we take it back, take it back, take it back over. And I do it all the time until I keep bumping my head. And it hurts. But first I had to get in touch with what it was they was talking about like in that third step. What am I really turning over? We're talking about my will and my life, which is my actions and my thinking. That's what I've made a decision to give to the God of my understanding. Because, see, we didn't find God in the second step. We found a higher power, something to believe in, something to keep me coming, something that gave me some hope. Because y'all was here and y'all was doing it and I was tired. I had to keep coming. Just because. At the beginning, it was y'all's stories. They kept me coming. Y'all was telling all y'all business. <laughs> and I wanted to go this week because I knew she was going to tell it, he was going to tell it. <laughs> but what I got in touch with y'all was what they were saying was the stuff that was in my spirit that I couldn't free myself of. We talking about being able to hear the message. You got to be open-minded. On a lot of days, we go to some meetings, right, and we go, oh, boy, here she go again. <laughs> She's still in the problem. <laughs> but if you really take a look at it and you listen to what she's saying or he's saying, they're crying out for some help, y'all. There are no bad meetings. Even you can get something out of every meeting you go to, even out of person, too. Even if it ain't no more than, I don't want to be like that when I get 12 years. <laughs> I'm talking about, once again, being open-minded. We got to be open-minded to receive it. So like when I got to the fourth step, man, I'm telling you, y'all scared the hell out of me with the fourth step. I thought I was going to like meet this monster, this person that was so bad, and I was going to cry, and I was going to relapse, and all this stuff. But see what I got in touch with? A lot of that stuff in the fourth step, and I'm talking to the people who haven't done a fourth step. If you're working with your sponsor, you got a network, you're building a foundation. Half of that stuff you're going to talk about in the fourth step, you already talked about. You already talked about. Because if you're practicing honesty, open-mindedness, and have some willingness, it's coming out. But when I got to that fourth step, y'all, and they was talking about patterns and all that old stuff and everything, and I got to look at how I did stuff. Did I get you because you wanted me? Did I twitch real hard so that you can look at me? Did I walk this way so I can get with you? See, we talking about learning who I really am up in the fourth step. But what I got in touch with, let me tell y'all this story. What I got in touch with was, I didn't know when I got here that I had character defects. You know, it carries the defects are like a box of tissue. If you go in to get one, you're going to get many, many more. <laughs> they coming out. You could, they coming out. You know, and so, but what happened was I found out we were talking one day. I was doing some stuff with my sponsor. And we was talking about things that, you know, you just did. You know, and things that you liked. And I say, well, I don't like cheese. And she said, you don't like cheese? And I said, no. And what I got is she said, Why? And I didn't know why. <laughs> I'm telling you a true story. What I got in touch with that was, and I'm telling y'all, recovery, Narcotics Anonymous is awesome. What I got in touch with that, it wasn't did not like, I didn't like cheese. Saying, telling people that I didn't like cheese 
will get some attention. <laughs> See, if you're in the middle hanging out with people right now getting ready to go for your pizza, I ain't going with y'all to get no pizza because I don't like cheese. And everybody would go, you don't like cheese. <laughs> So now it's about me. So it was uh, attention seeking. See, I ain't know that, but now I love cheese to down. <laughs> I'm talking about finding out little things about yourself. See, it ain't so much the big stuff. It's the little stuff we find out about ourselves and our spirit, y'all. You got to get it. And being able to share that with a sponsor was awesome to me. And being there to share, that was cool, because I was going to tell nobody, no, I was going to tell nobody I was manipulating to do some cheese thing. I wanted some attention. <laughs> but to be able to say that was wonderful, and doing that six step and get in touch with them character defects. I'm talking about like ego, easing God out. Not even being in touch with like, like Thursday, I don't, I don't need you right now. I got this. I got this. I got the relationship. You help me with everything else over here. But, you know, just, I got this. I'm talking about finding out in a matter of minutes that I was caught up in fear. I'm talking about false evidence appearing real. I'm talking about already projected the outcome. That's what keeps us caught up in fear because we already know what's going to happen. Without giving the God of your understanding some kind of entry to get in where so he can help you get to your destination. See, we talk about a passport. In order to get a passport, you got to have a destination. You got to know where you're going. Newcomer, get with your sponsor. Make a plan because an empty mind is real easy to get filled when I allow anything to get up in it. Have a destination. Have a plan. We don't have to surrender our passports without our permission. But I got to position myself. I got to get with some people that's helping me. It ain't about nobody. It ain't about nobody else, y'all. It's about us. Saving each other lives. I'm talking about seven stuff. We're talking about shortcomings, things sometimes I don't have enough of, like patience and tolerance. I've been, I've been struggling with patience and tolerance and acceptance for a long time. And for a while, I didn't have a vehicle. Right? And, 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 and I'm at the bus stop, waiting on the bus. It's about 90 degrees outside. But I'm grateful. <laughs> and I'm at the bus stop, and I've been standing there about 45 minutes, and the bus goes past. <laughs> I can't tell y'all what I said. And all of a sudden, I'm, for some of y'all that haven't experienced this, all of a sudden, something that's been bothering you in your spirit that you've been having a hard time learning how to accept and get it, but when you accept it, it's like a release. And all of a sudden, this thing came on me, and I was like, okay. I'm serious. I'm like, okay. There's absolutely nothing I can do about it. I didn't want to get the bus number. I wasn't trying to run behind the bus. None of that. But what I did, I called my sponsor. And I say, sponsor, I know what it's like to have acceptance. <laughs> she said, how you know that? I say, the damn bus just went past me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about being able to do this thing, y'all. You know, and then we was talking about the A step, right? The A step, I mean, for me, the A step was the hardest step in the world for me. Because when I got there, I had to look at all the damage I had done. All the damage. And I had put everybody on this list but me. And my sponsor wanted to know why I hadn't put me because I had caused me the most harm. See, what I need to let y'all know is the steps are in place so you can get in touch with the person that hurt you the most, which is you. That's why we have the steps. So we can get in touch with whatever's going on. But I had my mother on the list because I harmed her much. I'm talking about much. And I tried to get in touch with some of the things that I had did to her and, and some things I had harmed and hurt her so much that I couldn't even remember. 
I'm talking about the pain. I couldn't even remember the pain that I had cost her. And I remember I hadn't had a car in 10 years. Thank you, sweetie. Hadn't had a car in 10 years. Let me tell y'all that story first. <laughs> like, like, I live in North Carolina, right? And I got four DWIs in a year. <laughs> the state of North Carolina told me you will never. Ever, 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 ever. <laughs> never, ever, ever. Drive on our highways again. Because you're going to kill somebody. <laughs> and I prayed and I came into these rooms, y'all. And there were some people, the same thing had happened to them. And they started sharing their experience with me, telling me how they did it, the steps, the procedures, and things like that. And it took me four years. But I got them back, y'all. I'm talking about grateful. So in 10 years, I had never had a car, right? And I got this car in October, y'all. I was so happy. I ain't know what to do. Was going to work one day, and it was freezing about 16 degrees outside, right? And I go to warm my car. And I'm running late for work. I go running downstairs. My car say, find me. <laughs> Somebody had stole my car. And I go up, I say, honey, my car's gone, this car's gone. He come running down the stairs. It sure is. <laughs> so I'm calling the police and everything, calling this. I don't know what in the world. I'm running all around crazy, right? And I shared that with y'all because for the first time in my life, I remembered my mother's pain. I felt her pain because I stole her car so many times. She had to come looking for me in the drug areas, trying to find her car so she can get to work. She can live her life, a normal life like Earth people do. <laughs> but for the first time, I felt the damage that I had done to her, the hurt that I had done to her. So when I was able to make amends with her, how grateful I was to base my experience to be able to make amends and not just say I'm sorry, but to mean it from the inside. Mean it from the inside. And talking about that 10 step, y'all, you know what? We're talking about every day, every day, looking at what I'm doing, how I'm doing it. Am I being loving and caring to somebody else? Am I gossiping all the time? Am I causing harm, indirect or, or, or direct? See, that gossip thing, and this one thing, y'all, and I'm going to share this. Right? We talk about hurt people. Who in here is any better than anybody else? We got one purpose. One purpose. Because sometimes we get a little bit of clean time, and we forgot we came up in here dusty. Because now I can buy some clothes. Or I can take a bath, and because she can't be still at the coffee pot. <laughs> Y'all might not know nothing about that, huh? <laughs> but now I want to be judgmental. Like I'm better than because I done got cleaned up. See, we got to take a look at the harm that we got. It, it, it's up in here. Our internal strife that will cause us the most damage. Our internal strife. You know, an 11 step talks about meditation, prayer and meditation. You know, and I, I, I didn't know anything about that. Anything about that. Because now, for the first time in my life, I can get in my car and don't have to have no music playing. See, because there was so much noise up in my head when I got here. That something always had to be going. Always had to be moving. Had to be doing something at all times. My sponsor told me I was nosy. <laughs> see, 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 but she wasn't talking about nosy being in other people. She was saying that I was afraid I was going to miss something, so I had to be somewhere all the time, doing something all the time. Spirit messed up. Spirit tore up. So how grateful I am, y'all. See, I'm talking about the little stuff. How grateful I am when I can get in my car and I don't have to have the radio on. Because I'm no longer afraid of the noise. No longer afraid of, I've gotten this passport, y'all. I'm not turning it over. I'm not surrendering.
surrendering my passport. Come on now, y'all. I'm st- and the 12-step talks about carrying, carrying the message like we all do. We're talking about being an ex- example. It's not about promotion. It's about what somebody sees in me. Am I believable? Am I credible? Do I have any integrity? Am I about my word? If I say I'm going to do something, am I doing it? If you bring something to me, am I going to be woman enough to keep it where you left it at? Or do I deem it necessary to carry it somewhere? (laughs) And if I do, then what's my purpose? What am I looking for? What do I want when I carry it somewhere else? Am I trying to fit in? Am I trying to be nice? Do I want to be a part of it? Am I stuck in fear? See, I'm talking about having all this information once you get up in this piece, y'all, because there are no excuses for insane behavior. We have a saying, you're right where you're supposed to be. (laughs) But see, what they don't finish saying is, you're right where you're supposed to be based on the amount of work you've done in that area. See, I'm talking about, you know, we're talking about carrying the mess. I'm talking about, there was this young lady that came up in here. And when she came up in here, she was doing about 10 men. She had, that's what she knew. And everybody was like, well, when is you going to stop? Da, 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 da. So at three years later, she was only doing three. <laughs> that was progress for her. <laughs> huh? That was progress for her. It wasn't our progress. It was her progress. If that's where she at, no, but she ain't using no dope and causing no harm to nobody. She got to get there when she get there. We got to learn how just to be there. Not to beat them up when they make bad choices because all of a sudden I got it together. <laughs> but I ain't telling y'all I'm cussing my husband out when I get home. But I'm sharing like Shakespeare, living like a reindeer. (laughs) See, I'm talking about carrying the message. And recently, y'all, I'm I'm gonna share this. And recently, I had an opportunity to go to Utah and carry the message, right? And before I did, right, and I got the phone call, I was like, oh, I'm so grateful. I got the phone with that guy. I said, Lord, what am I going to do in Utah? (laughs) I ain't lost nothing in Utah. (laughs) And I began to question what I was going there for. You know, I I knew it was a reason, but I just wasn't sure because that was a long way. And misinformed information will allow you to get up in your head and you don't even know the truth but you've already projected because that's what you thought and that's what you believe. See, our attitudes and belief will keep us stuck without allowing ourselves to be open-minded with the possibility of something might be different. See, it ain't so much that we don't want to stop using, we're afraid of the change. Who am I going to become? Who is this person over here? I don't know how to go to work. We all want to stop using because when the degradation and the homelessness and the emptiness comes in, and a lot of times the disease don't let you do it or see it until all the dope gone. Come on now. Because as long as I got some money in my pocket, we good. But when I get home at bed at night, all by myself, and it ain't nobody but me, Now I'm caught up. And so I don't feel what I need to feel. I got to go get one more so I don't feel what I need to feel. So the disease continues. So I went to Utah and I said, God, what I'm doing in Utah? Went to Utah and I get to Utah, y'all. And I'm saying this because when we're talking to people, we don't know where they are. We don't know where they are. Only thing I know is that I never miss an opportunity to share recovery with anybody. Because coming from where I come from, let me tell you right now, I was bang, bang, shoot them up. It didn't matter who I hurt, 
how much pain I caused, children involved, if I could have sold them, they would have been sold too. I'm talking how far I was with the disease of addiction. So when I got to Utah and I did my thing, da 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 everybody, you know how they do that, like y'all gonna do hug me and stuff. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and we were in the lobby, right, and this guy comes up to me and he, he's like real somber, he, he, he's, he's, he's dirty and, you know, and, and he said, Thank you. He said, I've been trying to get clean for 15 years. He said, I've been going in and out of these rooms. He said, but for the first time I came in, he said, I come in here every Friday night to call my dope man. He said, and I asked the guy what was going on, and he told me in a convention, they told me to come sit up on the front row. In Utah, at their conventions, they have what they call critical ear row. Yeah. <laughs> right? And it's for newcomers and stuff. And, and, and he sat up there, and he said, I want to stop using. He said, I've been trying. He said, with your message. He said, your message has helped me so much. And that was on a Friday night. That was year before last. He is still clean today. Yeah. And I shared that because carry the message. Carry the message. Give somebody some hope. No matter how long it take them to get here or how many times they keep going in and out, give it to them. Hit them in the head. Let them know. <laughs> Let them know they don't have to live like that. Because there's an opportunity for all of us. All of us. Sometimes it's uncomfortable, y'all, but ain't nothing that bad. Ain't nothing that bad that we got to go and kill ourselves for. Nothing. But when I got here, y'all, I really learned what powerless was. <clears throat> when I was 12 years old, and I'm sharing this, okay. <laughs> When I was 12 years old, I was brutally raped. They stuck sticks up me. They sodomized me. They made me perform oral sex, and they left me in a dead, in an alley dead. So for 25 years, I was angry. I was mad at the world. Somebody owed me something. I didn't know what it was like to have a first time. I was violated. So when my girlfriends and I would get together, they would be talking about what it was like. I don't know what it's like to have a first time. But I shared that because any man or any woman that has been raped or molested in any form, you can recover from that too. Because if you don't, Uncle Charlie is going to become your past, is going to become your present. And you won't be able to move on because you're stuck. Because that's what kept me stuck for so many years. I can't give it no more power, y'all. I got some power today. And it's called Narcotics Anonymous and I got I am so honored to be here. I have met some beautiful people. See, I need to tell y'all, y'all, that I was broken when I got here. I didn't know how to love. I never thought I was lovable. I didn't think that I was able to hold those feelings inside. I didn't know what it was like to have empathy and compassion. But now I'm capable of these things because I'm doing what y'all told me to do. I'm doing what's necessary to learn to have these spiritual, I'm practicing spiritual principles today. I can smile and I don't want nothing from you. <laughs> I'm talking about in my heart, just being nice is okay for me today. Just being nice. 
not causing any harm. It's okay for me today. And it took me a long time to get there. I was so angry, y'all, that I couldn't do relationships at all. So I used to pray and ask God. I said, God, it's got to be somebody for me because I pushed everything and every man that came into my life away from me because I was angry. And when I got here, and I think I had two and a half years clean, and I went to a function, y'all. <laughs> you know those things that we get down with and don't have no alcohol, no booze, no nothing, and we just be partying, right? And there was this guy sitting in the corner. And all of a sudden in my spirit, it said, some of y'all might not believe me, but I'm telling you the truth. It said, that's your husband. I had never met this man, had never seen him before, anything. And I walk up to him and I say, I don't know who you are, because y'all got to remember, I ain't got but a little bit of time clean. I'm about angry still. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know who you are, but God just told me you my husband. <laughs> and he said, I don't know who you are either, but God told you, I guess I better go with you. And today he's my husband, and I am so grateful. You know, and what happens is sometimes, y'all, because of what has happened in my past, it's been real hard for me to be loving and caring. The God of my understanding knew exactly what I was going to need and the type of man that I was going to need. Not one that I could push over, not one that I could treat like a dog. You know how we get them ones that, you know... You know, you think you got the pie out, right? You know, the ones that you can control. Because see, I need to tell y'all, when I met my husband, it was four years since I had been intimate, so the cobwebs was everywhere. <laughs> you know that Lil Wayne song? Wee, 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 like a cop call. Caught up. You know, but one of the most beautiful things that um, he has the ability, the ability to do is he writes very well. He's very intellectual, and uh, I love that because I believe somewhere along the line I got fried just a little bit, you know. <laughs> so I'm missing just a little bit, you know, but he's very intelligent, and I love him, and he has a tendency to write things for me for my spirit because the God of my understanding knew I was going to need my spirit fixed. I'm talking, see, y'all got to know what hatred is. Hatred is when you put a gun to somebody's head because you know they got $50 in their pocket because you need to get one more. That's the kind of stuff that I did. I had no care for life. It did not matter to me. I didn't care about the harm. This is how powerful this disease is. So once you're locked and loaded and you got your passport, hold on because it's a hell of a ride. Because see, what you think is good now, it's more than that. Your good ain't the God of your understanding is good. It's more than that. You understand what I'm saying? I'm talking about, I got to tell y'all this story. I'm do, what happened was, right, when I came into Narcotics Anonymous, right, I was unemployable. I, I don't know when the last time I worked. Y'all get them little green papers and they tell you how much you done made this year, that year. It's so security. Zero, 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 zero. I'm like, how did I survive? You know what I'm saying? Anyway, I ain't messing with y'all. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> what he does is he deposits this beautiful stuff in my spirit, and what he does, he writes some very nice things. And um, before I close, I would like to share this with you all. <clears throat> the most useless thing is to worry. The worst thing to be without is hope. The greatest, the deepest weapon, I'm sorry, the deadliest weapon is the tongue. The two most powerful words, we can. Our greatest assets are faith. The most worthless emotion is self-pity. Our most prized possession is integrity. The most beautiful attire is a smile. The most powerful channel of communication is prayer. Our most contagious spiritual principle is willingness. The most effective way to share is a hug. Our greatest joy 
is giving. Our greatest loss is self-respect. Our most satisfying work is helping others. The ugliest trait is selfishness. Our most endangered species, trusted servants. <laughs> the greatest natural resource are newcomers. A greatest shot in the arm is sponsorship. <clears throat> Our greatest problem to overcome is fear. Our most crippling failures are excuses. Our most powerful force in the world is love. The most da dangerous weapon is gossip. The most important thing in life is God. My name is Cynthia. Thanks for letting me speak. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Please help us improve our ranking so others can find us by putting a review on Stitcher, iTunes, or your favorite podcast index. Napot is ad-free thanks to the folks supporting the show with a dollar or more per month. If you enjoy listening, you can join them by going to napot.xyz and looking for the donate link. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.